Now this can be a tricky one, especially if you're not used to hearing foreign expressions. Again, just like with everything else, English is made up of a lot of different languages. There's nothing that English doesn't absorb, that it doesn't sometimes find a way to spit back out. And foreign expressions are one of them. So, there's not really any, you know, one way to look up, like, a, a, a dictionary of all the foreign expressions that you would look up. And if we, even if we did, spending a bunch of time studying that would be crazy. But I do want you to be familiar with some of them. So, using context clues to determine the meanings of foreign expressions. All right, so let's learn with an example. Ms. Bartlett is always helping people in the neighborhood, so it's no surprise that her new restaurant is thriving, Reggie said. She has good karma. All right, so karma, We maybe we know it, maybe we don't, but karma, positive experience brought on by chance. Hmm, probably not. Fate determined by previous actions. Maybe, because we're talking about her actions of helping people, and therefore her restaurant is successful. So maybe. Insight developed over time. This isn't about insight. We're talking about actions and reactions. And intense happiness that's shared, that's shared with others. We're not talking about happiness. We're talking about helping people. So fate determined by previous actions would be the correct answer. That's what karma means. So many words or phrases in English come directly from other languages. And if you haven't seen one before, you're going to try to use context clues to figure out its meaning. Now, because this is IXL, and because this is practice, this is not a test, you might run into something that you are totally unfamiliar with, in which case you just need to do some research. And that's okay. There's no problem with needing to do research while you're learning this stuff. So let's do a couple, and let's take a look. I don't watch that reality show anymore, Ashley explained to Doug. There's always one prima donna who constantly demands everyone's attention. Okay, so, looking at our options, what do we think prima donna probably means? A person who is interested in material comfort? That doesn't really make sense when we're coming to talking about a reality show. Are we talking about an annoying or offensive person? Well, maybe. A very smart or talented person? That doesn't sound like somebody who's always demanding everyone's attention. Or is it a vain person who is difficult to work with? Okay. I mean, I've got two good options here. I think either annoying or offensive or vain person who's difficult to work with. But what I know about prima donna is it actually comes from opera. Opera stars, specifically, who are known sometimes for being difficult to work with. So that's what I'm going to guess. And I'm right. Okay. Kira Holloway is a big fan of buying household supplies in bulk. Just ask her son and daughter, who usually have to schlep enormous boxes of laundry detergent or dishwasher tablets in from the car whenever Kira returns from a shopping trip. Okay. Now, using context clues, I can make an educated guess here. Schlep. Boxes. From the car. Which I assume means to the house, like to where they live. So, to transfer something. Is that what schlep means? Is it to support or balance? Probably not support or balance. To lug something around? Maybe. To have as part of a whole? No, that doesn't make any sense. So it's either to transfer something or to lug something around. But, you know, to lug something sounds like I'm carrying something big and heavy. So I think it's probably going to be to lug something around. But you know what? I'm learning and I'm not sure. So you know what I'm going to do? Look it up. What does to schlep mean? Oh, it comes from Yiddish. Haul or carry something heavy or awkward. She schlepped her groceries home. Okay. All right. So, I'm pretty confident it's to lug something around. Boom. Good. There we go. All right. And so, on and on it goes, right? You're going to look at these very carefully. Follow the process of elimination. Don't always just search. Don't get me wrong. Search if you need to. But try to train yourself to think through it carefully and methodically. One more together. In the American debate on healthcare reform, the systems of many other countries, e.g., the Canadian healthcare system, have been examined as possible alternatives. Canada provides universal care to its citizens, yet spends less of its gross domestic product on healthcare than the United States. Okay, so we're looking for the meaning of e.g. All right, well, it's e.g., so it's not egg. It stands for something. All right, so just in many other countries, and so on. So basically, we're going to substitute, right? We're going to plug these things in. In the American health, in the American debate on healthcare reform system, many other countries, and so on, the Canadian health, that doesn't make sense. That's not right. 
uh, system in countries. For example, the Canadian healthcare system. Now that makes a lot of sense. E.g., that is to say, the Canadian healthcare system. Maybe or countries, e.g., also called the Canadian healthcare. Well, no, because it wouldn't also be called the Canadian healthcare system if it's many other countries. That doesn't make any dang sense. Now I lean towards, for example. But what does EG stand for? Let's double check. What does EG stand for? Exempli gratia is the abbreviation, meaning for example. This abbreviation is typically used to introduce one or more examples of something mentioned previously in a sentence. Okay. Can be used interchangeably with something like for example or such as. For example. Boom. Done. Process of elimination, double check yourself, you'll be fine. 